Okay, so the next thing we're going to learn is we're going to learn how to animate our characters blinking without using any smartphones. And to do this, we're going to be using switch layers. So let's go ahead and create a switch layer just for an example. So under layers, we're going to add a new layer. So we'll click the new layer button and we'll select switch. So let's go ahead and rename this uh, example. So example. And switches are folders that hold other layers. So we do need to create two new vector layers. So let's go ahead and select a vector layer. We'll call this red and we'll create one more and we'll call this one blue. There we go. Now let's go ahead and add in rectangles into these layers. So for this one, we're going to be adding in a red rectangle like so. And for our blue one, we're going to be adding in a blue rectangle. Revolutionary, I know. But um, from here, we're going to move these two layer into our switch layer example. And actually, hold on, let me really quick. I'm going to add in kind so that way you guys can see what kind of layer this is. So as you can see now, our example layer is a switch layer. Red and blue are now vector layers. So I'm just going to select both of these by holding down shift and I'm going to drag them so they are inside our switch layer, which is called example. Now you're going to notice once I let go of this, we're only going to be able to see one layer. And that's my cat again in the background. <laughs> so as you can see, we can only see blue. And when I select red, we can only see red. So for switches, you can only see one layer at a time and there's an act there's actually a panel so under windows we can select the switch selection panel and this will bring up a little window so we can easily toggle in between our layers so let's go ahead and animate this so on frame six let's switch this to red and then on frame 24 we'll switch it back to blue so there we go now we're going to use this system to create the illusion of blinking. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this example. And this character actually already has a lot of switched layers. So let me show you what I did for her eyes. So this is her eyes. So these, so this is the switch layer for her eyes. And once I open it, you are going to notice there's a lot of eyes. Now let me go ahead and open up the switch selection layer again. And we can use this to look at all the eyes I have created for this character. Now, and now because these are all in a switch folder, I can easily switch between all these animations. So let's say on frame 12, I want her eyes to go down. And then on frame 15, I want them to open back up. And what's here? Okay. So I already added in a squint right there by accident. So let's go ahead and see how this looks like animated. So there's a really quick blink in there. So she opens her eyes, she closes her eyes, and she opens it again. So if your character has some simple eyes like this, that's an easy way to create the illusion of blinking. But let's go to a character that has a more complex eye rig and let's use switch layers to create the illusion of blinking there. Okay, so here we are. We're still in Moho Debut. I just brought in this complicated character from earlier and we're actually going to use switch layers to make her blink. So let's go ahead and look at her, um, the way I've set up her eyes. So all her eye parts are in one folder and this folder is using masking. So her pupils, if I move her pupils around, oh, her pupils are also a switch layer. So if I move her pupils around really quick, they are being masked, so they cannot escape the masked area. And I have one layer for her right eye and another layer for her left eye that make up the mask. So that's basically everything within her eyes. So I've already went ahead and made a folder for her eyes being open. And I've also made one for her eyes being closed. And let's go ahead and move these two layers into a switch layer. So let's create a new switch layer. I have to be on frame zero. You always have to be on frame zero if you want to make a new layer. 
So there it is, switch layer. Let's call this one eyes. And let's go ahead and move both of these eyes to the uh, to the switch layer. And they both have to be um, visible. So let's go ahead and move these. And now we can only see one. And when I select on the switch folder, we can now use the switch, the switch selection window to animate it. Now let's go ahead and do that. So on frame six, let's have her eyes open. Actually, you know, let's go ahead and start them being open. Hold on, let me start over really quick. That, that did not go the way I wanted it to. So her eyes are gonna be open. So they're gonna stay open until frame six. And then for frame 12, we're going to close. And they're gonna open again on frame 18. So let's switch them back to being open. And let's see what this looks like. That's great. So we got her eyes to open and to close. But you might be wondering, oh, but I'm not getting those good in-betweens that I usually get for smartphones. Well, there's actually a way you can animate the eyes in, or just animate the layers in general when you're using a switch layer. So let's double click on our switch layer so we can open up our layer settings and let's go to the switch tab. Let's turn on interpolate sub layers and watch our timeline right here really quick. Just watch this area right here. I'm gonna select apply and our little switch layers have now turned into keyframes. Now let's see what this looks like. It's now animated. Now there is a small trick to this. You need to make sure that every layer within your switch layer have the exact same points and are being animated using points and not the uh, move layers tool. They have to be moved using the transform points tool. Let's go ahead and add in a third option where her eyes are like halfway closed. And I'm gonna show you what I mean. So let's start with her eyes open and I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer. And we're gonna call this one halfway. There we go. And we're gonna use the points to animate her eyes going down. And by the way, we are on frame zero. So let's go to our right eye mask. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the transform points tool. You know, I'm just gonna go ahead and select all these top points and I'm going to bring them down like this, somewhere around here. And now from here, I'm just gonna manually move these points like this. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the left side. So I'm gonna bring this down. There we go. And I'm trying to make sure these are similar. Let's see. I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. There we go, that's pretty similar now. Now from here, I can actually go ahead and animate this as well. So let's see. Um, so we're back on our switch layer and now we have our half eyes. So it starts out, we want a, we want her to start out with her eyes being open. They close. And her eyes kind of get kind of, you know, iffy here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in that um, halfway point like this. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. So we won't have these this breakage. And the fire alarm is now going off in my house. <laughs> Okay, good news, my house is not on fire. So let's go ahead and continue with this tutorial. So let's go ahead and see what um, our animation currently looks like now that I have added those halfway points. So that's really good. And I'm gonna go ahead and play it again. Yes, that looks pretty good. But let's say we want her pupils to move. So we want her to start out looking at us, but then we want her to look to the right. Now at the moment, our eye, our blink, is just way too long. Usually a character blink only lasts about five frames or so. And right now we have it at 18 or so. So let's go ahead and make this much shorter. So on frame six, her eyes are gonna be open. They're gonna stay open. So technically the blink is going to start right here on frame six. And then on frame nine, 
they're going to close. Let's go ahead and add in our halfway point. So open, close, blink. Let's open it halfway again. And we're going to add in our fold eyes. There we go. So there we go. That's, I think this is much better. Just this quick blink like so. Okay, so now that we have the blink figured out, let's figure out how to move our character's pupils. And we're actually going to be using the, uh, what is this called? This is called the transform layer tool. We're gonna to be using that tool to move our pupils because we don't have a smartphone to move them for us. So for our animation, I want our character to start out. I want our character to look at us, blink, and then look to the right. So at frame nine, she's gonna start looking to the right. So let's go ahead and animate this. And we really don't need to worry about the close uh, eye layer, layer. The, you know, the uh, eyes are kind of already closed. We can't see the pupils, so there's no point of animating them. So let's go ahead and jump to the halfway point. Now let's go ahead and select the pupils. So from here, I'm gonna add in a starting keyframe and I'm going to have these pupils move to the right. Now let's see what our animation currently looks like. So blink look to the right, but then all of a sudden she's moving back to the center. This is because we actually need to add in a keyframe on the open eyes right here. So let's jump to the pupils under the open, open eyes. And then let's see. So from here, I want the starting position. And by the time this layer shows up, I want her eyes already to be over here. So let's see what this looks like. So that's pretty good. Oh yeah, that's really good. I really like the way that showed up. Hmm, I don't like how her eyes are already supposed to be over to the right. So let's see what's happening here. So let's go to the halfway eyes, to the pupils, and let's move our starting point. So. There we go, I think that's much better. And I don't think I explained it, but all I did was I just moved our keyframes over one frame. So let's see what our animation looks like. There we go. So that's how you would create an eye blink as well as moving the pupils while not using any smartphones. So now for this example, this character is kind of complicated, but I just wanted to show you all that it is possible to create complex animations using Moho Debut. Um, even if you were to go ahead and buy Pro, these are still concepts you're going to have to learn. So you're just learning them sooner in Moho Debut than Moho Pro. So I hope this video helped you all. And if you have any questions still, or if you want me to go into more depth in anything you saw in this video, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll make a tutorial on it.